Want help to grow your business? Download Bryn, the world's first business advisor in your pocket. To find out more, visit Bryn.ai or search the App Store today. Welcome to episode four of Family Business Matters. I'm Lloyd Russell from TCB Solutions and with me today is Miss Kylie Wilson, Director and Solicitor at Holding Redlich. Today we're talking about governance for the family business um, and uh, how that governance can work for a family business. So Kylie, give us a bit of an overview of, of governance and, and how that actually goes through the family business. Sure Lloyd. Um, so when we're talking about governance in the context of family business, I mean, as you're well aware, family business, as opposed to third party standalone businesses is a fairly unique uh, business and, and vehicle. So, mm. and one of the reasons for that is that uh, frequently in family business, there's emotion, uh, a level of emotion and attachment to the business that's not necessarily evident in uh, other businesses. So uh, governance is is really, uh, about promoting a structure um, to manage some of those family issues uh, in the context of the business. Um, and I think that the more uh, structured that can be, uh, the better benefits there are for businesses moving forward because you have a system in place to deal with uh, common issues that arise for family that affect the business uh, and particularly areas where there may be dispute you can have mechanisms in place to assist with resolving that dispute in a fashion that won't be quite so expensive <laughs> and quite so beneficial for lawyers as opposed to business. Yeah, yeah. And, and you were talking about there about context and, um, and, and the context of the family and as we know in family business there's, there's many parts and they can be a shareholder but not work in the business or they're not even a shareholder or work in the business. So how, how do you see go the, the governance structures and the, and the governance systems sort of helping with those sorts of things? So one of the, the areas that governance can help in particular is as opposed to um, a corporate entity where you have a constitution for your company that deals with business and a board of directors that's dealing specifically with the business. In addition to that in the family business there can be a lot of benefits with having a family council that can be involved to support the board but to represent family interests um, with the board and uh, particularly also then a family, it's, it's often called a family charter or a family constitution as distinct from your corporate constitution, which deals with specific uh, family related issues um, and, and structures how the family is involved in the business. So uh, for example, um, within that family charter, there will be the overall missions and values of the the business as the family sees it, and also aspects of employment of family members within the business because that can often be a uh, problematic issue <laughs> um, and something that needs to be discussed with family members. Uh, and a family uh, charter can help set some guidelines around how that discussion should happen. Mm. Yeah, and, and uh, in previous episodes, we talked about the dynamics of a family and, and strategising for the family. And uh, as, as we've worked together, we sort of talk about those sorts of things and having, um, you know, the, the charter is actually developed by the wider family yeah. so they can understand that that legacy the family's known for and carry that on and... Uh, yeah, and, 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 and not, not so much as a, as a corporate constitution mm. and not so much structure or business focused but family focused. Mm. Um, and there are a lot of issues that will affect a wider family um, as it impacts on the business that you won't necessarily deal with in um, your legal structures which we'll talk about yes. in another episode. Yep. Uh, and so the idea behind a family charter and uh, regular family meetings and communication uh, is to make sure that um, you've got a very long-sided view because a lot of these businesses are intergenerational or at least the aim is for them to be intergenerational so um, a properly uh, planned family charter can look long term at way more than one generation it can be looking forward for three or four generations um, obviously then it should be something that evolves uh, and not necessarily set in stone, it will evolve as each generation moves forward, but 
uh, having that structure in place to focus on um, some of those family issues really does promote um, everyone understanding the business, understanding what the aims of the business are, uh, and um, will ultimately, the aim is reduce the likelihood of uh, larger issues and disputes arising. Mm. And it's interesting you talked about um, you know, evolving uh, through that there and, uh, and I suppose uh, from, from your perspective and your wider network that you're, that you're doing, you're managing with is, uh, how do you see that playing out if we talked about corporate corporate structures and well or corporate governance as opposed to um, if, if we talked about the family governance and uh, and that sort of stuff we think you know the next gens and and all those sorts of things yeah. so and that's it's an interesting it, thing we're seeing now yeah, it? yeah and it's it's a <laughs> it is a quite a complex <laughs> problem for family business in particular so from a from a corporate level obviously you'll see businesses have um, a plan in place that really the dynamics of personality, um, whilst it might affect the business, is largely irrelevant because if you have a major personality issue, um, that person probably won't be in the business uh, any longer. Whereas with family, um, obviously if you're talking about intergenerational family business, you're going to see a wide range of both personality types and different views from intergenerational perspective. So as far as evolution of things like um, the family charter is concerned, the family charter itself should embed the ability of each generation to have its say within family meetings or a representative on a family council and so the charter can ev evolve that way because it's very important for a business that's intergenerational to ensure that that youth and idea, those youth and ideas and that youthful vibrancy can have um, an impact on the business, particularly from a growth perspective, whilst not being too stymied by the older generation. And conversely, um, the older generation will require that that younger generation doesn't expose the business to too much risk. Mm. So um, both of those generations are, um, for a successful family business moving forward, extremely important. Um, and a family charter can actually help promote the right levels of input into the business um, from each generation as it moves forward. And that's a very good segue into uh, what you mentioned there earlier on as well, is that, that, that there is a third dynamic away from another business, you know, a conventional business or a standard business as we call it or whatever, yeah. inside a family business. And, and so how do you see the play separating the business, yeah. uh, because it, it, it's very structured under ASIC and various other instruments that we've spoken about and we will definitely speak about in future episodes. Yeah. And uh, so how do you see that playing out um, you know, from, uh, from your perspective? Yeah, it's, it, as we've talked about before, it's not always one size fits all. So <laughs> it, it partly depends to an extent on um, your level of what number of family you're talking about too because you can have smaller family businesses that literally have mum and dad and you've got the next generation coming through and then you can have larger businesses that actually have uh, four generations yeah. of family spread out between it and 15 um, adult family members on an existing board before it moves through to the to the next generation so um, I think from that perspective the the idea is that um, on the governance side, it's important to ensure that everyone in the family can have an input. Communication's essential, and that's what that family side is about, whilst also still having, I suppose you could say, a delineation mm. between that side and the business focus side, so that you don't end up in a situation, particularly as you get towards being larger businesses, where you have too many voices, as we say, too many cooks can spoil the broth. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, too many voices having a, an impact directly on day-to-day -day business decisions. Yeah. So that's where you have a family council that will have representatives of multiple family mem family groups so that all the family groups feel they have an input onto that council. Mm. And then that council supports the board of directors yeah at the corporate level. 
Mm. And, and as, a, as a sort of senior advisor in that area, would you strongly advise that the chairman slash facilitator of the family council be, be different to any of the board members? So there, so there is, uh, I suppose, an emphasis on delineation? Yeah, I think it's, it's important that um, uh, the right people are picked for the right roles. Mm. Uh, so I think in any family, everyone will have a different area of skill set. Um, but having said that, uh, there's also um, the importance of educating that next generation as they come through in the business. And you may need to get external advisors in. Yeah. Um, and that's uh, not a, that can really promote the business moving forward for the family. So if you uh, think that you have some real skills in your family set that can help the business, then look at how they can be educated to promote business growth going forward. Mm. Um, and a lot of that too is about, as we keep coming back to, about communication. Yep. So communication in family business really is the be all and end all, yes. um, without question. And you don't want to end up in a situation where one generation, usually the younger generation, is saying what they think the older generation wants to hear <laughs> as far as their involvement in the business. So communication at that family government mm. governance level can make sure that everyone feels they can be honest and open and not judged about exactly what roles they think they should play yeah. in the business or what roles they think they can play in the business or that they're not interested in the business at mm. all. Mm. Mm. And, and I suppose that goes back to that evolution is actually having that communication and those structures and those yeah. systems in place to allow people to evolve, which means they can allow the business to evolve. And, and, uh, and in a healthy fashion. Yes. Too. So because yes. as we said at the start, one of the unique areas of family business is emotion yep. um, because all families have that. And the in it, where you have these type of governance structures in place, um, everyone has a very clear understanding yeah. of uh, what the goals are, what the aims are, uh, how communication is supposed to happen, um, are there monthly meetings, are there annual meetings. Um, it's not something where... Uh, one generation feels like to understand the business mm. to them is like throwing a dart at a dartboard. <laughs> um, I mean, that just that, that doesn't work and it's not good for yes. the business. So um, the more there can be that structure in place, the better your communication is mm. going to be as the generations move forward. Mm. And that, that, I suppose, adds that, that other dynamic uh, that's, that's very difficult to manage, but also very difficult to come into if we talked about outside, uh, outside directors on the board. Yep. Uh, so they're independent directors uh, and that sort of stuff. So uh, as, uh, again, sort of how do you see that playing out with the, with the dynamics and how, and how would that you know, operate inside a, uh, a family business structure? Yeah, yeah. And, that, and that again comes back to being um, uh, ab about the structure. So where you have independent directors coming in on the board, um, that can be extremely beneficial for the business. Uh, but it's also then important to know that the family knows they have some level of input and involvement in some of that decision making, but it shouldn't be in a way that overrides the board of directors because mm. they're there for a reason. Yes. Um, they've been put in place for a reason and that's to focus on the business. And, and that's where um, things like your family council are important. And where you have those structures set up to start with, you won't end up in those situations. To continue enjoying this presentation, download Bryn, the world's first business advisor in your pocket. To find out more, visit Bryn.ai or search the App Store today.